Hello everyone and welcome to your Chem 113 review on Hess's Law with two equations. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. There's a lot on the screen right now, so you know, uh, soak it in real quick. The idea here is we want to calculate the enthalpy of, of this reaction, the combustion of carbon into carbon monoxide. But the issue is, and this happens a lot in chemistry, reactions don't always occur in one step. It's not always that simple. A lot of times reactions will occur in multiple steps and you may want to find out information about the overall process from that. So the combustion of carbon doesn't give you immediately carbon monoxide. What actually happens is these two steps happen. You combust the carbon and it gives you carbon dioxide first. And then if we were to like look at the reverse reaction here, carbon dioxide would then decompose into carbon monoxide and oxygen. Okay. So it's a two-step process. You have to make the carbon dioxide first, and then that carbon dioxide will decompose to give you carbon monoxide, which is what we are looking for here. So the, the, the big header for this section is about Hess's law. What is Hess's law? And here's the idea behind Hess's law. It, it essentially says the overall, overall change in enthalpy, overall delta H, of a reaction, reaction uh, equals the sum of the, the delta H's for each step of the reaction. So, so for instance, if we go from A, oops, if the reaction that takes us from A to B as an enthalpy of, let's say, H1, and the reaction that takes us from B to C has an enthalpy of, let's say, H2, then what we can do is we can look at the reaction from A to C, right? Because what, what's happening here is we're going in two steps. We go from A to B, and then we go from B to C. So what if we just want to look at the overall reaction that takes place that starts at A and goes to C? Well, the reaction from A to B has an enthalpy of H1, the reaction from B to C has an enthalpy of H2. So the reaction from H to C will have an enthalpy of H1 plus H2. That's, that's the, the, big, the big news there. Okay, so we, you add the change in enthalpies for each step together to get the overall change in enthalpy. That is Hess's law in action. So let's, let's try to apply it to this case that we have up here. So, uh, again, there's, there's two steps that happen here. The carbon reacts with the, the uh, oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide. Now, this second equation is kind of wrong. It's flipped from what we want, right? Because if we go through this first step of going carbon to carbon dioxide, the next thing we do, well, we have carbon dioxide now. So we need to start at carbon dioxide and produce something else. But the second equation doesn't start at carbon dioxide, it ends at, ends at carbon dioxide. So, so this second equation needs to flip around. And we're allowed to do that actually. So we can actually take this second equation, which I'm calling two, and flip it around. And I'll call that equation two prime. So instead of carbon monoxide plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide, we can instead have carbon dioxide gives carbon monoxide and oxygen. I don't know why I put that in parentheses. And in doing so, the enthalpy will actually swap, right? Because this says that, that 283 kilojoules is being released during this reaction. So 283 kilojoules is being put into the carbon dioxide in the vessel. But if we flip it around and we have that, that 283 is still going into the carbon dioxide, now it's going into our reactants, not into our products. So instead of producing heat, we now need the heat in order for the rea reaction to occur. So the, the delta H for this reaction would actually be a positive 283.0 kilojoules, okay? So now, now we, we, if we look at the first, first step, we have carbon reacting with oxygen to give carbon dioxide. And now our new second step we're taking that carbon dioxide we produced and we're now breaking it down into carbon monoxide and oxygen. 
So if we were to look at the overall reaction, if I were to take essentially reaction one plus this new reaction two, let's see what happens. Um, so all of my reactants, I have carbon, I have this oxygen, and, and since I'm adding these two together, I also have the carbon dioxide. Those are all of my reactants. And what are all of my products? Well, I have this carbon dioxide gas, that's a product, and then my products down here. Okay. But by adding these two equations together, we realize, uh, well, first of all, we can look at the delta H, right? The delta H for this reaction, according to Hess's law, would be the delta H of the first reaction plus the delta H of the second reaction. Okay. That's what the, the overall delta H is. And I can do that uh, math for you real quick. Negative 109.5 kilojoules. Okay, but what reaction is actually happening here? We'll notice we have a carbon di dioxide as a reactant and carbon dioxide as a product. So in reality, we don't really need to, to look at the carbon dioxide. It's, it's acting sort of as a spectator here. It exists as a reactant and a product, so it's not really doing anything so we can get rid of it from our equation. Similarly, we can reduce the oxygens, right? We have one mole of oxygen here and we have a half mole of oxygen here. So in reality, we're only using half a mole of oxygen. The other half is staying around. So we can reduce these, we can get rid of this one and reduce this one down to a half mole of oxygen because we're only actually using a half mole of oxygen. And after making all of these adjustments, we realize the reaction that's actually occurring here is we're taking this carbon, we're reacting it with this half mole of oxygen gas, and we are producing this carbon monoxide gas. And this, this reaction here, is the exact reaction we were trying to find the enthalpy of combustion for. So this reaction, which has a delta H of negative 109.5 kilojoules, is the reaction we're trying to find. So its enthalpy is negative 109.5 kilojoules. Okay? That is our answer. Negative 109.5 kilojoules. So, so what we did was we were just trying, we looked at what we wanted, we wanted to produce carbon monoxide uh, from carbon. So we needed a reactant of carbon, which, which we had here, and we needed this carbon monoxide to be a product. So we had to switch this around, the second equation. And then by adding the two equations together, we realized that everything canceled out so perfectly to give us the exact equation we wanted. So a lot of times that will happen. Things will just sort of cancel out as you need them to. If they don't, you may have to multiply an equation up by, by a factor or divide it by a factor um, until it works to how you want it. And we'll, we'll look at this a little more in depth in the next section when we go over Hess's law with, with three equations. It gets a little more complicated. Perfect. Uh, well, thank you for watching. As I mentioned, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. If you want more information about the free tutoring resources available to you on all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu slash content slash tutor dash search. By going here, you'll be able to find a tutor uh, on your campus or online that will be able to help you with your specific course. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.